This video presentation has been classified by the ABC as M. It contains material that is not recommended for persons under 15 years. A year ago this week, Hells Angel associate Anthony Zervis was bashed to death in full public view in a bikey brawl at Sydney's domestic airport. It prompted a police crackdown on bikey gangs as governments around the country developed controversial new laws to tackle the clubs. In response, the bikies set up state councils to unite against the proposed new laws. Tonight, in a Hungry Beast exclusive, Jessica Mendes goes inside the New South Wales bikey bunker. This is a meeting of the United Motorcycle Council of New South Wales. Every two weeks, the leaders of self-described outlaw clubs like the Hells Angels, Nomads, Finks and Rebels meet with Christian and military clubs like God Squad and the Vietnam Veterans. That's from the uh, last meeting. We had Margaret here from the PR company. She's talking to us about the uh, ABC. They're here tonight. After the Sydney airport bashing, the bikies became concerned that new gang laws would threaten all clubs equally. Bikey councils were formed across the country. In New South Wales, 18 clubs united to lobby against the laws and help resolve disputes. The council also hired a PR company to address what everyone here concedes is a serious image problem. How do you guys think the public see you? They're blinded. They don't see who we are. Like, we're, we're the average person. We just got an interest in bikes. They see what they want to see. Yeah. They see us as, uh, what, criminals? Um... It does seem to a lot of people like you guys enjoy that, having that really sort of menacing and scary image. I think people get scared because they know if they fuck around with us, we have brothers that will back us up. We're not going to let a brother bleed when we're not bleeding. And what sort of disagreements do you guys have? Respect. You've got to respect each other. If you don't show respect, you don't get it in return. Anyone want to add to that? A lot of it comes down to perceived lack, lack of respect on one party or another, or actual lack of respect from one party to another. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get a hold of that, as you can see here, so... Yeah, there's no truth to it. We all have to understand that if we keep continually arguing with each other, that the world's going to end. Under the New South Wales government's criminal organisation laws, members of a club can now be placed under a control order and banned from working in around 15 different professions. Those include security, tow truck driving, running a bar and being a mechanic. There's not a lot stopping them um, adding things to that list either. I mean, they, they're constantly amending laws. We could do an experiment. I could tell you who I work for and we'll see how quickly they put that on the list, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> the laws also ban them from associating. Meeting another member under a control order would result in automatic arrest. Anybody who's seen with us a cluster's associate. So fundamentally now, you're a biker bitch. Yes. These are all in on it. These are all in on it. These men want us to know they see the legislation as an infringement of their civil rights and ours. The fact that any group of people can be subject to the legislation, the fact that criminal intelligence can be used against you and you're not going to be in court to hear what it is so you can't defend yourself, this is really a dangerous piece of legislation. But the police maintain tough laws are necessary and that bikey clubs are organised crime units. The bikies see it differently. That's one thing that the, but the media beef up and everything. So like I said before, if you ever went to one of our meetings, we're not that organised. Defence, huh? <laughs> and the way that police dress us all up, that there's one bloke at the top, he hands the drugs out and we all go out and feed it all out like an organiser. That doesn't happen. Police would argue, though, that certainly there are individuals within a lot of clubs that are involved in criminal activity. Yeah, we've got people in the club that are. So is a football club team down the road. Read the yeah. headlines in the last So is the Labor government. <laughs> yeah. So is our, so our police force. Are they an organised crime unit? Not everyone's buying the idea that relations between the clubs are as relaxed as they seem in this room. According to a recent article, a bikey war is still simmering. That's just more police propaganda. Nothing's been happening, so the paper sales would be down. It's like a soap opera. They want to read the next instalment. Just had a joke with the angels. If you read that article, apparently we're going to war over tattoo parlours with both phone. 
<laughs> but we know nothing of this. That's, that's a complete blow up. That was a, you know, they just want to keep writing a saga about it. I don't think, uh, I don't think the, uh, the public realise we're fathers, we're grandfathers. How many people here have kids? They wrote about our wives having Gucci bags. I say, my wife ain't got a Gucci bag. <laughs> Every time something comes up about the big bad bikies, I've noticed car drivers are more likely to sit up your backside when you're on your bike. They see someone with a patch on their back and they go, oh, beauty, let's hassle him. Why? I've got a wife at home. I want to get home to. To listen to a fart. <laughs> You know, when she watches this, when this comes out, she's going to kill me, you know? <laughs> Why do you think I'm wearing long sleeves? She bashes me. Covered in bruises. I think a prime yeah. example is Vietnam veterans. Because we've got a back patch on, we are a 1% club in the eyes of the police. Hotels and everything else, we're treated exactly the same. We wear a back patch with pride because we served in Vietnam. We came back and we were ostracised by the government, by... Everyone, when we came back, at least the bikies give us a chance. We fought for this country and we cop all the shit. The council is keen for us to understand that bikies are just like you and me. But some of the men here see violence and lawlessness in a very different way to most Australians. Our attitudes are pretty old and raw. We deal with what we deal with. There's so many people out there that walk the earth would love to be able to go and bop someone over the back of their with a bat because he pissed him off. We're just fundamentally, we just, do it the, we just do it our way. Violent disagreements between rival clubs have been kept to a minimum over the past year. Regular council meetings mean clubs are increasingly answerable to each other and no one wants to be to blame for a repeat of last year's events. In March last year, a man was killed at the airport in front of a lot of very scared members of the public. I know it's before the courts and there's a sub issue here, but is there anything that you can say to the public about it? It's got, it's got to be said that what <laughs> happened at the airport was yeah. a tragedy. Yeah. But the, the fact of the matter is, you open the newspaper any day of the week and you're reading about similar sorts of stories that don't continue getting the same thing. It's there one week and it's wrapping your chips the next week or whatever. And the whole story just goes away in that particular time. This one hasn't because they're motorcyclists. It's the stigma attached with these, this particular group of people and not because of anything else. You look what else happens in the world. Get over it, build a bridge. It's moments like these that make you wonder if a PR strategy will be enough to save the bikies. In the meantime, the irony of being brought together by laws designed to keep them apart hasn't escaped anyone. In a way, the government helped us come together. They, the police want to tear us apart and have us fighting, and the government, in the same light, pulled us together or pushed us together. Since this interview, it's been reported that the New South Wales Police are moving to declare the first club illegal. It's not clear how long the council and the relative calm it has brought will last. Oh, I declare this civil rights meeting closed. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>